Hey, my name is Paula Carnero. I'm coming to you today with a few answers to several questions that I've gotten in the field lately about UiPath licenses and how to get a software robot into your environment. There's been a lot of noise in the RPA market, not going to lie, we've, we've changed the name several times. You've heard IPA, RPA, Intelligent Process Automation is what IPA stands for, it's also a beer. Um, and now we're all pretty much settled on hyper automation. So within that, there's several players. And today I want to answer a few questions about UiPath. So in the UiPath nomenclature, the difference between a bot and a license is nothing and everything. Um, so the UiPath product suite actually comes with several types of licenses, a robot being one of those types of licenses. There's also document understanding. Uh, you have AI components that you can add on, and all of them are sold in the same way in that same license model year over year. So those are all bundled under the SKUs of the UiPath suite of licenses, not to be confused with a robot. So a robot in and of itself is a license, um, but it's actually a unit of capacity. So when you talk about a software robot, what you're talking about is an available amount of space to code a whole bunch of tasks to ultimately make up a process. So that's the difference between licenses and bots, sometimes the same, sometimes different. UiPath has broken it down though on their website, so you can definitely check it out there. UiPath came out with a really innovative approach to creating robots. So they have what they call an attended and an unattended robot. Attended robot is exactly what it sounds like. It's a robot that functions after the click of a button or after some action taken by a user. An unattended bot is one that's programmed to function on a schedule. So an unattended bot is often um, orchestrated by what they call an orchestrator, uh, and it actually moves with what you've programmed it or designed it to do. So when you have an attended bot, that means that you're pushing a button to get that robot going. And when it's an unattended bot, it means that you've programmed that to be able to take action whether or not a human is involved. Depends on the kind of license that you're getting, right? But if you're talking about a, um, a robot license, right, a license to, um, to use either an attended or an att unattended, and actually there's a hybrid robot as well available in the UiPath product suite. But once you get that license, basically what you're talking about is a measure of capacity. So ultimately what you need to do before you decide on what licenses to get or how many robots you need in your environment you need to understand what your overarching objective is. What is it that the output is supposed to achieve? What is that process supposed to wind up doing at the end? Because ultimately that's what you're feeding into your robot to ultimately perform. The only way you can assess, truly assess the amount of capacity that you need on a robot is to really understand the design behind the configurations of creating that robot. So before you even get started on how many licenses, do I need five bots, 10 bots? Um, it's important to come up with what the vision is, what the processes are that you're gonna automate so that you can reverse engineer and get the right capacity for your organization. When you purchase a software license, in this, in this case, we're talking about robot software licenses. It's really an interesting thing to think through what comes with your licenses and the best way to buy it. Um, prior to me joining WonderBots, I had actually had a complete career and all I focused on was the services behind process automation. Now that I've gotten into the business of license reselling and understanding the different complexities there, there is a lot to unpack and understand and it can get complicated and create a whole bunch of technical debt that you're not, not prepared for. And that's, that's ultimately could put your you know, organizational um, objectives and this program at risk. So two things to think about. It's counterintuitive to think that you should go to a partner to buy something. Typically when you wanna get the best bang for your buck, and in this case, the best price per robot, you go straight to the, the manufacturer, right? So you go straight to UiPath. In the case of robot sales, actually, and, and software robots, it's actually more cost effective for the consumer, the buyer, the client, the organization to come to a partner like WonderBots. The reason is, is that we're incentivized by our tech partners to give a really, really great outcome with what we put those robots to work to do. 
Um, and typically what, what UiPath has learned over time is that by enabling and enhancing that partner relationship, their clients, the end user is ultimately more fulfilled um, and winds up getting those, the, that material value and achieves that ROI in, in a faster way. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about software sales is, um, is when you're considering a license, it's important to think of it in the long term. So you can certainly get a one, you know, one robot deal and, and I'm sure, uh, you know, any UiPath rep will do, you know, whatever they can to throw a robot into production for you, get you excited, get you started. Um, but after a few years watching that, that process roll, uh, what I've actually come to see is that the best way to approach buying a UiPath license and what comes with it is, is longevity and a commitment is the three-year plan. So you actually get a discount on a per robot rate when you commit to a longer term. So if I committed to five robots, I get a discount. If I commit to 10 robots, I get a discount. That could be counterintuitive to what I shared earlier about having that vision, which is why it's so important. And again, even the tech companies incentivize you to work with partners because it's really important to map out that vision, understand what the directional goal is and reverse engineer that back to the cost of robots that you're willing to invest in. really funny uh, when you're thinking about the timeline of a tech project, um, because there's all kinds of variables that come into play that are often avoidable when thought through. Um, so when it comes to buying your UiPath license, let's say, you know, signed on the dotted line, you're ready to get a robot. Um, it could be as quick as an installation the next day. Uh, it really comes down to whether the readiness of your organization is in place. So often, you know, when, when a client's ready to go, ready to, you know, get started with their robot, what they're waiting for is internal access. What a lot of people fail to remember is that this is ultimately a capacity that you're adding to your organization. This robot is essentially a digital employee that you need to onboard just like any other human, needs to pass through all the credentials, the logins, understanding the access points. Um, and so just like onboarding a human that can sometimes take a little bit of time, Onboarding a robot is typically more the onus on the client, more the onus on the organization's readiness than it is on the tech's uh, ability to put it out there. Um, we can turn around robots pretty quickly. It's usually about the readiness for the organization to accept those robots. 